Harrison Allen. Here's the last thing from Harrison for today. When he leaves the Socialist Party, he offers what is arguably the most profound but least heated criticism in the history of the left. The Socialist Party, like the labor movement, has insisted on white race first and class after. It put the white race first before class. Leads us directly to the question that Alan seeks to address, what is this white race? Here's Alan around the time he's writing uh, in the 60s. On the back of the first edition of the invention of the white race in 1994, on the back cover, Alan has this passage. When the first Africans arrived in Virginia in 1619, there were no white people there, nor according to the colonial records would there be for another 60 years. The word white does not appear in a Virginia colonial record until 1691. White identity, as he explains, had to be carefully taught, and it would be another 60 years, right, before it would appear as, a, as an indicator of social status. I want to just emphasize this point. No white people, because when we grow up, we are taught in the schools from day one to the degree that the subject is, oh, well, there were white indentured servants and black slaves, as if it was mm -hmm. that way from the beginning. We're going to stand all that on its head. Alan stands all that on its head, and I hope one of the things is you leave this class, you never pass that on to others, right? Um, there were no white people there. This is the John Punch case. This is the only record of John regarding John Punch. And John Punch, as I mentioned previously, is the person who's related to Barack Obama. And there was a big uh, to-do made about this uh, when Ancestry.com came out about this, because the interesting twist was John Punch, who's of African descent, right, was related to Barack Obama on his mother's side, right? Um, so they, they put wow. an added to it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, um, but here is the only account. And what happens is John Punch is a bond servant, and he's with two others, a fellow named Victor, who's described as a Dutchman, and a Scotchman named James Gregory. And they try to flee their bondage, and they get captured. But if you look at the account, a Dutchman and a Scotchman, they're still not white, right? And this is the only account. Then we are going to talk, we will talk more about Bacon's Rebellion, the big struggle of the 17th century in Virginia, 1676 and 1677. But here is the account of Thomas Grantham, the ship captain who was sent to put down the rebellion. And this rebellion comes after a period of 12 laboring class and bond servant revolts in about 16 years. It was a very volatile context that this is taking place in. And Grantham recounts how I there met about 400 English and Negroes in arms, still not white, who, uh, who were much dissatisfied at the surrender of the point. That's West Point. That's an area down there in Virginia. Saying that I had betrayed them and thereupon some were for shooting me and others were for cutting me in pieces. I told them I would willingly surrender myself, that they were all pardoned and freed from their slavery. Most of them I persuaded to go to their homes, which they did, except about 80 Negroes and 20 English, which would not deliver their arms. Still not white. And you go through any colonial record, you're not going to find the word white as a symbol of social status. So Allen argues this is supreme proof that, uh, uh, that the white race did not exist, but the, Grantham's testimony is also of profound significance because laboring class African Americans and Europeans had fought side by side for the abolition of slavery back in the 17th century. You wouldn't see that for the next few hundred years, right? So here's the three main theses from Allen's invention of the white race. I have a friend who's an attorney who told me when he goes into court, not that I've ever really done this, but he says what you have to remember is you tell them what you've got to tell them, then you tell them what you have to tell them, and then you tell them what you told them, right? So here's the three points. You, you might hear this again later today, but I want to make sure that you've been introduced to these three theses. First, the white race was invented, invented as a ruling class social control formation, not simply a social construct, but a ruling class social control formation in response to labor solidarity, that what I just showed you, that labor solidarity as manifested in the latter Civil War stages of Bacon's Rebellion. That's number one. 
Number two, a system of racial privileges was deliberately instituted, conscious ruling class policy. This is not simply, um, what's the phrase they use? Institutional racism, you know, with nobody driving the ship. This is directed by the ruling class, by the late 17th, early 18th century Anglo-American bourgeoisie, and they instituted this system in order to define and establish the white race, and in so doing, establish a system of racial oppression. And racial oppression is, uh, is the subtitle, it's in the subtitle of Allen's volume two, which is his most important book. It is the key book in that two volume invention of the white race. Number three, Allen argues, and this is crucial, that the consequence of this system of white privileges and setting up this system of white racial oppression was not only ruinous to the interest of the African Americans, but was also disastrous for European American workers. Disastrous for European American workers. That is qualitatively different than if you go to Wikipedia and you look up white privilege and they tell you all white people benefit from privilege. Clearly the people at the top of society benefit. It's in their interest. They're the ones who push this system. But Allen is arguing very forcefully it is disastrous for European American workers and clearly ruinous to the interests of African Americans. And he argues for the European Americans, their position vis-a-vis -vis the rich and powerful was not improved but weakened by this system of white race privileges. So what Allen's arguing is that the white race is no part of genetic evolution. He's arguing that the white race, as I said, is a ruling class social control formation. Could you just say that again? Uh, it's no part of genetic evolution, okay. right? It's a political, it's done politically, it's a political construct. And it, he's saying it's a ruling class social control formation, not simply a social construct. And why this is important, and I've mentioned this, if you just say that race is a social construct, you leave the back door open for the Dinesh D'Souza's and the Daniel Patrick Moynihan's and all those people who will come and argue, well, yeah, it's a social construct, but what would you expect if people have inferior culture or this or that, right? All these other rationales to explain it. it you know, it's, it's almost, rather than putting it where it belongs, you know, uh, uh, locating the driving force behind this uh, social uh, construct, this social control formation. Allen argues, I come out of the labor movement, this one has great appeal to me and great relevance, I think, uh, hopefully for all of us. The white race is an all-class association. Now this all-class association is very important, I think, because I'm going to be speaking at a sociology convention in another month, and I am going to stress to people, let's break from these charts that say white, black, Asian, and let's break it out by class a little so we don't get a lot of these misleading generalizations that come, right? But the white race is in fact an all-class association of European Americans held together by racial privileges conferred by the, on the laboring class, European Americans relative to African Americans. Conferred, this is from the ruling class, that who's driving the ship, that's who's setting up the system. He argues it is the basic, most prevalent, and historic form of class collaboration in this country. If it's an all-class association and they're aligning together against the black labor, for example, that is class collaboration. That's when your co-workers collaborate with the boss against your fellow workers. Right? White supremacism, this is Allen, is the Achilles heel the great weakness of the labor, democratic, and socialist movements in this country. The white race, this creation, has served as the principal historic guarantor of ruling class domination of national life in the US. And this one, very important, I think, white identity is the main barrier to class conscious in the US. He says the main barrier is the incubus, the devil of white 